This is the Lenovo IdeaPad 5i Chromebook from 2021. It's a higher spec mid to more premium range Chromebook in a 14 inch clamshell form factor. I've been using it for the last few weeks, so I'm ready to give you my thoughts on whether it's still worth considering in 2024 and which spec you should be watching out for. If you didn't catch my unboxing video, which includes how much I paid for this Chromebook, I'll link it at the end of this video. So right up front, I'm really liking a lot of what this Lenovo 5i Chromebook offers. And as it will get Chrome OS updates until June 2031, I think at the right price, it's still one to consider today in 2024, especially if your budget it may have you thinking about a newer but lower end Chromebook, this could be a better alternative. The build quality feels great, it's got a premium feel with the aluminium lid, it's relatively thin and light at 1.41 kg, that's about 3.12 pound. Design choices like the rounded corners also make handling the Chromebook that much nicer on a day to day basis. I think it looks good if a bit serious in this dark grey that Lenovo calls storm grey. There's also an option for a colour called sand. The only problem I've found is the body and screen are a bit of a dust magnet. You'll probably notice that in this video. Performance of this Chromebook as expected has been rapid. Processor wise I've got an 11th gen Intel Core i5 processor which is the most powerful option. There's also a Core i3 or a Pentium Gold processor. With the Core i5 you also benefit from the faster performing integrated graphics. That's the Intel Iris Xe graphics. So if you're looking to buy I definitely aim for an option with the Core i5 processor like I have in this one but with any of the processor options I think the most important factor is you consider a model that pairs it with 8 gig of RAM. Mine has 8 gig and it's low power DDR4 RAM but there are still quite a few options of this model line with just 4 gig of RAM and I'd avoid those. Everything fell to media in terms of performance in Chrome OS. I usually have two accounts logged in with multiple tabs well over 20 combined and I found no issue. Gaming was also great and the Bluetooth 5.1, whilst not the latest standard, had no issues with peripherals like my Google Stadia controller. And in terms of Wi-Fi, it's Wi-Fi 6. The other key component that likely adds a lot to the performance is the NVMe storage. And in this model, I've got the top drive spec of 512 gig. There's also 256 and 128 gig versions to watch out for. Naturally, with that performance and the Core i5 in mind, there's a bit of heat from the processor via the fans and the grill in the bottom, but nothing too excessive. It rarely bothered me when using it on my lap, but I'd prefer to mainly use this at the desk. The knock-on, of course, is that battery life seemed a bit more variable to me. I found I was wanting to charge most days. Linked to that, this Chromebook has its unique party piece of the LED strip on the front, helping to visually indicate your battery level each time you lift the lid to come out of standby. As your battery percent goes down, so does the green LED bar. It's only a very rough correlation, but still handy to see. And if you're under 15% of battery left, it even goes amber, but sadly never red. Recharge time with the supplied 45 watt USB-C charger also was a little bit slow. I timed it at roughly two hours to go from zero to 100% of the 45 watt hour battery whilst the Chromebook was turned off. The display is nice and bright at a claimed 300 nits. It's a 14 inch full HD IPS display, but color accuracy is actually fairly low at 45% of the NTSC color space. Not a problem for general browsing and use, but if you planned on any kind of editing design work, this might be a factor. Although it's not a convertible, the display does go back 180 degrees against the body of the Chromebook, which I always find is helpful. There's also an option for a touchscreen. I don't have that on this particular model. I think that's the only factor stopping this one from being the top end of this range's spec in all options. It's worth noting there's no pen support with the touch option though. Music and audio sounded pretty good with the upward fire speakers on the keyboard deck. Nice and loud, treble seems good, but as I find with many Chromebook speakers, there's not really much richness or bass to the sound. Here's a quick sample using the intro track from this video.
The keyboard deck is one of the standout parts of this Chromebook for me. The keys have what I describe as a medium travel with a really nice feedback and quality feel to their texture. Not rough and cheap like some, but equally not overly smooth or shiny. It's fairly quiet too, with a lower deep click noise. And there's an optional backlit keyboard too, like I have on this one. All of these sorts of things can go unnoticed, but just add to a really nice experience, especially if you're on your device for long periods of time. The touchpad also has a quality feel to it. It, no looseness for taps and gestures, it's a decent size and has a reassuring click. Connectivity was also decent, there's dual USB-C for charging from either side of your desk. Just the one USB-A port, it might have been nice to see a second there as well. All the USB ports are 3.2 Gen 1 rather than the slightly newer Gen 2 which can offer much faster data transfer speeds if your external device supports it. So it's not a deal breaker for me. I know some would prefer to see an HDMI port on board, but I'm personally happy using my USB-C dock at my desk or my hub when out. And running extended displays over my two full HD monitors, plus the Chromebook's display as a third, was as expected, not an issue. The webcam has a privacy slider, but it's only 720p in this model range. Something you'd probably expect to see at 1080p, e.g. full HD in a newer Chromebook of this type. A Full HD webcam is something you'd find on a newer Chromebook Plus model, and unfortunately this Chromebook is just outside the cutoff to qualify for Chromebook Plus. In 2024, you really do need to compare its Chromebook Plus models that may bring extra hardware benefits, as well as the software exclusives to Chromebook Plus. You can check some of those out in this playlist on the left, or if you want to see the unboxing and how much I paid for this Lenovo, that video is on the right for you now. Cheers.